Everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. My name is Ashton, and we- Peter's back. Are you welcoming? Um, do I count as every? Am I in with everyone when you say welcome back to the podcast? Were you welcoming me? You no, are, I, guess. I was no. Just to be clear, I was omitting you on purpose. Well, then you should I would, say did everyone. Did you just click? Did something <laughs> just, just click in your I shoulder? Should, you should say everyone except Peter. Except Peter. Okay. Well, correct. we'll do it again then. Okay. okay. Hello, everybody, except Peter, and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. And my name is Ashton. And Pe- Peter's back. I'm and back. Peter's back, I suppose. How are you doing, Peter? I'm doing all right, thanks. Uh, first, I was being sick, then I was on holiday. Uh, as, first, as, I was as, unwell. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of cancels out, I think. I had pooed my pants. Sorry. As um, Ben was saying on the podcast, and if you listened, he said you were I having big plops. Right. He's having big plops. And time. then last week when you were on Hollabobs, uh, Ben said you were having big plops in Ireland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's just doing the world tour. Yeah. I just <laughs> just taking I'm not, this I'm no, I'm no better, but I am still going on that holiday. <laughs> <laughs> it has been booked. Yeah. Did you have a nice time? On I holiday? did. I could have, if I'd wanted to. To done big plops on the plane flying in. Because was it that bad? It it was it was pretty bad actually. Oh um, man, flying back was fine, uh, and actually flying, I I was thinking like, is it going to be like this all the way? But when we were cruising, it was absolutely it was like smooth sailing. Oh, was it really turbulent? But taking off and landing was like real bad. But actually, that's the one part of flying that I am fine with. I feel like. If it's if it's turbulent when you're taking off or landing, I'm like, mm. yeah, but you kind of you're moving around anyway. Mm. You're going up or, or down, um, hopefully the right way. <laughs> yes, but um, yeah. you know, if you're like meant to be having a nice cruise and then suddenly the plane like falls ten feet, that's yeah. not as nice. But uh, some of the people around me were the the guy next to me looked very worried. Your dad? Um, yeah, my dad. <laughs> the guy yeah. next to me. I think my dad was probably the only person on the, on the entire plane, except mm. maybe the pilot. Did you go with your family? On. Yeah, yeah, it was a family holiday. Nobody tells me nothing. Oh. I didn't even know you were going on holiday last week until literally the Friday before <laughs> when Ben went, oh, he won't be here next week because he's on holiday. And I was like, what? Uh, uh, huh? Did you, uh, did you know my dad was there or did you just guess? I knew it was a family oh, okay. holiday. Yeah, it was a family holiday. But yeah. uh, I assumed your dad nothing. would be there. My my dad's worked in... <laughs> Sorry, Ashton. Would Peter will have to Next check time. in with yeah, you. I haven't heard anything about this holiday <laughs> and it's Thursday. <laughs> my dad's worked in aviation for a very long time and has probably been on more planes than... Well, definitely been on more planes than anyone else I know. Mm. He used to fly like twice a week sometimes. So wow. uh, That's a lot of flying. He probably has had worse flights than that. He was fine with it. Um, Doing cartwheels down the Yeah, aisle. he was causing issues, in fact, with the weight <laughs> He was asked to sit down <laughs> yeah. several He's times. He up to the, the, what's it called, the front, the, where the, the pilot front. sits. The, the cockpit. cockpit. <laughs> the cockpit. <laughs> I forgot the, the word. The pilot's special room. The pilot's special room, room and offering uh, any assistance. Advice, yeah. It, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it was, I mean, it seems a distant memory now, but it was during the, all those storms and mm. stuff. And yeah. when we took off, the pilot came on and said, uh, yeah, um, coming into Cork, at the moment, it's looking a bit like we might not even be allowed to land there. Like it's it's just too windy, and we're like, oh, brilliant. And so, then when he said, like, no, we are we're going to land into Cork now. If anything, we were probably like disappointed that he'd said that. We're like, oh no, we're going to land in that place that half an hour ago it was like you're not allowed to land there right now. So, Actually, yeah, it's fine now. Here we go. It'll I kind of wish you'd okay. landed in Heathrow. So the man who was like filming everything. Yeah. Been like, People said on my chat, thing. were you on uh, whatever it's called? Mm. It? So much not. drama surrounding that guy. Is there? Yeah, like the the real the real plane spotters were like, he's an ambulance chaser. He just wants to see a crash. Don't give him the publicity. Boo. There was real infighting. I don't know if the, they realised, but everyone who was watching community. just also kind of, I think, wanted to see. Yeah, a they're crash. not there for actual yeah, maybe plane a little spotting. Bit. Yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit. I didn't watch it because it was stressing me out. And, it, and you had your back to it and you were busy working. Yeah. That was the main thing. Yeah, everyone thing, in the office Ashton. also had their backs to exactly. it. Exactly. Well, I didn't, unfortunately. <laughs> I, it was right there. And I was, was like, I'm flying next I week. I actually didn't remember. It was really watching. loud as well. It yeah. was on extremely loud. Mm. Uh, but there we are. This is our video game podcast. Hello. Uh, where we talk about video game things. Each and every week, we're sponsored by a very real video game adjacent sponsor. Peter has the ad read in front of him right now. I've got an exclusive here. It's exclusive. A, an exclusive. A, I, I have a exclusive here. <laughs> uh, it is a huge, huge announcement. I don't know why they've allowed us to reveal this to the world. Ooh, it's exciting. It's the biggest video game crossover event of the year. What? In the... Two of the biggest video games of the year 
are doing a crossover. Whoa. Right? Okay. Coming next week. Next, next week. week? Next week. They've been really quick with this. Yeah. Horizon for Belden Ring. <laughs> it's going to be huge. Okay. Um, Just wait till that comes out and everyone will be saying Elden Ring's a dead game. They will. Dead game. Dead, dead game. game. Hashtag dead game. Hashtag dead game. I'm just glad they portmanteaued the word for Belden because if it was just mm. Horizon Forbidden Ring, that sounds a little bit more dodgy, I think. It does. That um, sound like a, maybe a Rule 34 kind of situation. Yeah, possibly. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But no, it, it's coming soon. Horizon for Belden Ring. What kind of... How have they done the crossover I is it just like Aloy and Elden Ring or I think you, you can play as like who you want but right. you fight big metal dinosaurs but this time they just kick your ass right. and then you just you get really annoyed and turn it off okay um, unless you don't if you're into that kind yeah. of thing uh, but I would me so, too um, yeah it's gonna be great it's like Horizon but just really hard yeah <laughs> I think did you just okay did you just take the two names and there's no pun here that I'm missing right it's no. just it's, it's just, just it's just the two, two names, names mashed yeah. together. Yeah. Okay, well yeah. that's fine then. Cool. When's that, it out? Uh, Next week. Well, as you say, <laughs> crazy. Did I just put the two words together? Yes, I did because it's not real. Because well, uh, it's not who real. Saw that coming? Damn it! Uh, not I was me. massively overthinking that the entire time. Like there must be a deeper meaning. I did think you were quite this. quiet. What is it? What is this? Is Belden a thing? <laughs> What's a Belden? <laughs> Am I missing something? For what? No, it's just surely. He's just, what is that hand gesture? He's just done that. <laughs> Taken that one and that one. And, uh, and he's, just, he's just done that. There's the two for Belden rings there. Cheeky specs. No, mm. we are not sponsored by for Belden ring. We are, of course, sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash, forward slash team triple jump, where for as little as $1 per month, you could submit questions to this podcast. We've got loads of other tiers available as well. Please do consider going and checking them out. Also, there's another way you can support us, is there? Is there one of you? Yeah, you yeah. can go to facebook.com forward slash team triple jump and follow our Facebook page. Join the group, the Walrus Clan group. Yes. And when we get to 10,000 follows, uh, we'll be really happy and we can pay James Jenkins and me. And not a moment before. Uh, not a moment before. Mm. Um, go check it out. We'll talk about it a bit more later on. But if you have a spare minute right now, why don't you just go to the Facebook page? Why don't you just go to the, yeah. the, 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 the diddly Facebook page? Go do it. If you wanted. If you want it. You should. You know. Thanks. I've got a question here from Young Grandpa. Okay. okay. Um, who says... So young. I'm so young. <laughs> and I, my child has a child. <laughs> Greetings, Bap. It actually says greeting, Bap. Just Greeting. one. We have to share it. Just a single. It. Uh, it's 2022 now, and the days of every property available getting a mediocre THQ <laughs> licensed game or... It's your turn with the greeting. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. I was trying to get eye contact with you, but you just <laughs> weren't looking at me. I could just see you doing something with your I was, hands I missed. I missed the initial greeting pass. Ashton's just handed me the greeting. Yeah, you have it now. That's nice. Uh, the days of every property available getting a mediocre THQ licensed game or a game based on the newest movie are long behind us. However, in this future, we're getting licensed games that create their own stories and take on a life of their own. Then in parentheses, it says Marvel Spider-Man and Mars Morales. And Miles, comma Marvel's <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, mm. comma the upcoming not Telltale but basically Telltale Star Trek game, uh, with so many licensed properties getting the care and attention they need to become stellar games. What properties do you think? Uh, do you all think could make for a fantastic gaming experience if done by people who love the property, and not by people who love money? Jump, oh. jump, jump, da. I think it's Darren. I think I forgot to copy in the end. <laughs> Dar. <laughs> it says D-A-R-R-E. Uh, Darren. I think it's Darren. Darren. Uh, good. Thank you. We got there in the end. Um, I wrote down three. Mm. And every time I wrote an idea down and then was about to write the next one down, I was like, oh, that one I've just written down is actually, it's going to happen already. It's happening. Mm. So this is good stuff. My, th- I came up with three answers and all of them are actually happening. Yeah. Okay. X-Men, we've got Wolverine coming. Yes. Oh, that's true, yeah. Um, so I'd love to see an, either either a sort of Wolverine-style game where you presumably only play as one X-Man. Although that being said, in Spider-Man by Insomniac, you did play as MJ. You uh, did. And Peter Parker. And Well, yeah, I mean, as Different well as... Different guy. Yeah. Well, and Peter Parker, true. Is MJ an X-Man? No. <laughs> okay. But I mean, in <laughs> Spider-Man, you didn't just play as Spider-Man. Right, my point. I see. No. I, I, was, I thought I missed a bit of the story. No. And I was like, huh? Like, what I was about <laughs> to say was, 
in Wolverine, presumably you will only play as Wolverine. Yeah. But actually, maybe not. If you might they... play as Logan as well. Mm. You might play as Logan. Yeah. Uh, his alter ego. Yeah. Yes. His um, secret identity. Wow, who's that huge muscular squat guy? Yeah. With he's the not, claw hands. It's all right. It's not Wolverine because he's not got the claws out. Oh, no. that's Logan. That's, that's just Logan. That's everyday normal guy Logan. Everyone knows Wolverine can't put his claws away. They're just exactly. out all the yeah, time. Exactly. So that must be Logan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, in any case, however it is they're going to do Wolverine, I, I would like to see either an X-Men game where you maybe play as one X-Man, such as Wolverine, all the way through. Or maybe an X-Men game where there are different missions where you're playing as different um, X-Men or women. Yeah. Um, and they're sort of tailored to you. It could be like linear. I guess it being open world makes it... I always think... I think we've talked about this before. Like when you have particularly a superhero game, but you know any kind of game where different characters have different abilities, if you have an open world, you then have to be a bit more careful that like you're always going to be able to get to the top of that mountain or like get through that area if you're able to play as a different character. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to make it accessible to all, all characters. But uh, you know, certainly if it was a linear experience and each mission was like designed for certain X people, that could be good. <laughs> Um, I then put Star Wars because, you know, until recently, EA has been in charge of Star Wars and they famously love money. They do. Um, they do. Yeah. they yeah. didn't make Jedi Fallen Order in a we love money kind of way, but that's about the own, that's the exception that proves the rule, I think, is that 99% mm -hmm. of the time they love money. They made Battlefront the way they did. They made the, the flying one Squadrons? the way they did. Squadrons. That was pretty, pretty money loving. Um and uh, so I, I'm looking forward to just seeing more Star Wars now that the exclusivity is gone. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, I thought I'd like to play an open world Harry Potter video game. Ah, And that's happening this year. Um, so I think that's going to be great. Obviously, there are, there are issues with the franchise as a whole, namely the person in charge of it. But if we're just talking about the merits of the game, I think it looks like it's going to be a, a good time. So... Mm. I'm glad that's happening, and hopefully it's not being done in a money-loving way, as young grandpa puts it. I'm surprised you didn't say Jurassic Park. I thought that was going to be oh, a Oh, yeah. I haven't even thought of that. Yeah. No, that that is one. That, that one. That, that one as one. well. Well, that's a good answer, because that is one that, at the moment, is not sort of happening, as far as I'm aware. Well, they're making a things. Jurassic Park, like... Uh, simulator thing, aren't they? They've been doing, yeah, um, what do they call it? Um, f f uh... I want to say for Forgotten Kingdom, but that's not it. Fallen Kingdom. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> or was that just the, that was the name of the second movie, wasn't it? You know the the art the yeah. management yeah, yeah, yeah. game. Uh, yeah. Evolution. 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 Yeah, Evolution. Yeah. Mm. Forgotten Kingdom or Fallen Kingdom was the second film. But yeah, the Evolution one and two. But I'd like to play like a you know a first person Dino Crisis style game or something. Yeah, that'd be great. Get them dinos, you know. Yeah. I yeah. think it's about time. That they make a movie based, uh, make a game based on the best movie that's come out this side of 20, 2000. Um, 20, 2000. <laughs> 2000. 20, um, yes. I think it's about time they make the Uncharted movie into a video game. Oh, thank God. You right. Know, right. Someone was made, brave enough to why say Why have they it? not made that a video game yet? It'd be really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just kidding. I know it's a franchise, <laughs> just in case you didn't understand. I would love a really, um, I would love. A video game adaptation of, of the, movie, the movie, but made to the standards of a usual movie game. Mm. Like just a really crap linear corridor. Yeah, just the worst possible movie time you could imagine, but it's all called Uncharted. <laughs> yeah. That would be incredible. Uncharted the movie, the game. I'd love that. Uncharted the game, the, the movie, movie, the, the game. game. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but for realsies, I would like uh, Charlie's Angels movie because I really like Charlie's Angels, both the recent one, which people said was bad, but I really had a crush on Kristen Stewart, so maybe that's why I liked it, um, <laughs> and the old ones as well because I think they're they're great. Um, we feels played a like, Charlie's Angels game. I, was gonna I say, know there yeah, is like a actually. really crappy one, but yeah, if we could yeah. have like a good one. I was about to say, nice. feels like something we might have played on Worst Games ever, yeah. but we yeah. did. Yeah. I remember yeah. it. The, they I have idle animations Charlie. where they dance like lunatics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we've had that one. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'd like an Oceans game. Oceans, I think, 1 through 13. I don't really know how the numbers work in Oceans games. <laughs> I think it started at 11. Uh, yeah. Did no, it? no, there's there's definitely 14 Oceans movies. I don't really understand how they work. They've all got different. I thought there was 12. Because I saw Ocean's 12 first, and then Ocean's 13 appeared, and then there was Ocean's oh, wow. 11. I hope I never heard And of I was like, I don't know. God, how how, how why did is the it? 10 of these pass me by? I didn't, didn't understand how they work. Um, but yeah, an Ocean's game, like a heist game, could be really cool. That'd be like cool. different parts, and you can make it kind of like 
co-op kind of could be like situation. hitman where there's loads yeah. of different ways to do it yeah but you've got someone like if you have like a co-op version of it someone's like the hacker because there's a i don't know if you guys ever played it there's a playstation game that came out on ps plus a couple months ago where there was like two spies and one mm. of you was the hacker and one of you was like the operative and I can't, Operation Tango, I think. I think that's it. Yeah, I and never I really, it. that game was really fun, and I thought that'd be quite cool, um, kind of vibe. Also, a Ghostbusters game. I know we had a couple, and there's literally a ranked list of all the many of Ghostbusters and games. Most that we of had. them are rubbish, and most yeah. of them are rubbish. But that's the point good, of the question, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, to have a good one. A good one. <laughs> and then I quite like a Wonder Woman game. Actually, are they making a Wonder Woman game? Uh, I feel like they are. Yeah. I feel like they are making That's one. Yeah. Just, I've yeah. just had that moment of like, I remember watching <gasps> the trailer. Um, yeah, was it Game Awards where there was just like a clip of like a... Is a shield. And a yeah, sword. shield just and a, a lasso. W. Yeah, and just a, a panning. W. Yeah, just some concept-y thing. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Well, I hope that's good. Like the Indiana Jones. Yeah, fingers crossed, eh? Yeah. Where it just went across the desk and there was a hat and it went... And that was it. Sad horn. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are what I would like for uh, video games from those movies. It's a, a good share. Indiana Jones actually is another one, but that's happening. They're all happening. Yeah. It's great Indiana news. Jones but will they, they be are. good? Yeah. Did I miss yeah. that one? Bethesda's making it. Mm. Oh, okay. There were some good one, good goodish ones for the time on PS2. And I really like the Lego Indiana Jones games. Yeah. They're pretty mm. good too. Ben. Ben. Yeah. What, what franchises would you like to see made into? Yeah. I'll tell you what franchises. Firstly, I wanted to be a real stick in the mud and just say. Um, actually, uh, all games need to be made with wanting to make money in mind. Otherwise, you won't be able to have like the yeah. high budget experience that you want. But there is a middle ground there on the extreme. You've got obviously like Star Wars Battlefront, which is very cynical and not good. And then you've also got Marvel Spider Man, which clearly had an insane budget and needed to make all its money back, but it also happened to be really good and mm. they got the right people and the right team involved, and now they can just make those forever. Please. And if it hadn't been, they might have made a loss on it and it would have been really bad. Exactly. They didn't put microtransactions in it or whatever. But it's great. And yeah. it doesn't need microtransactions. No, absolutely. So there's a few things we spoke about vaguely before, but uh, Stranger Things, I think, would make a really good mm -hmm. video game. I know there was a Telltale game that was cancelled. Um, and I just can't help but feel like, especially with this sort of bingeable nature of a lot of streaming shows, that when I'm sat there binging them, mm. I I just think, man. This you mean was... looking them up on Microsoft? Yes, <laughs> yes when I'm putting them into yeah. Microsoft Bing, I can't help but think, man, that would, that would, uh, I would have loved to have like just played through that. You know, just mm. that was a really well uh, realized sort of self contained story told in an hour. And that would, I'd love to dip into a game like that that I could just sort of pick up and, you know, it, there are new chapters out, new episodes out, go play it. A bit like how The Order would make a really good streaming show, I think. The Order 1886. 1886. Yeah, I think. Oh, it, right. Oh, I see what you mean. It's it like being a TV like a show. nice little yeah. contained story, you know, like the, the, the flip side of that. Yeah. 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 No, Complement each other as formats. Isn't it's good. there a Stranger Things game? There's a mobile game. There That's was going to be game a pass. Telltale one. Oh. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go there. They may well okay. have released like a smaller indie one. I definitely played like a kind of rubbish it, mobile game uh, at one, some point. But yeah, I'm talking like a full. You yeah. Know, like I wanted to I just, nice. I just couldn't remember. Uh, how about a good Captain Scarlet game? <laughs> I, yeah. was, I was really struggling for ideas, to be honest. <laughs> right. Uh, because we've just played a very a real stinker, real stinker with one. And uh, I just think that, that the fiction of that universe is so rich. Mm. Imagine having like a third person sort of action game. Yeah. But Captain Scarlet, you know, oh, yeah. there were so many. We got this one. Is that the one you've played? Stranger Things 3, the game. No, I haven't played that one. There was a mobile game before that. But yeah, that exists. Probably so yeah, a lot of blast properties there's Stranger that Things, the game, could have been really list. good. Mm, um, Knight Rider. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I don't care about Knight Rider, but I, I would have liked a good Captain Scarlet game. Imagine growing up with... The PS1 equivalent of that Spider-Man game that everyone loved yeah. on PS1, but for Captain Scarlet, that would that would have been great. But no, apparently, it's, we can't have that. <laughs> uh, the final one that I've got here is a WWE. Can right. you imagine if they treated that property with respect and yeah, made, like they like a, made like a really good game? Mm. Uh, it's focused far too much on uh, the simulation aspect and being super realistic. And I think it needs to look good, and it does look graphically good. But it can also be fun. And they say every year, I feel like if someone put a montage together of, of the amount of times, or in fact, just 
presumably every release where they where it says refined gameplay. Yeah. It's like, well, when are you, when are you gonna you you stumbled upon it twenty years ago? Why are you, why are you refining it every year for two <laughs> decades and getting further and further away from what was uh, accessible and fun? I don't understand. But wrestling is 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 at its best when it's uh, when it's telling a good story. Mm -hmm. So why not just do a really good narrative game where you're where you are a wrestler and you're trying to navigate your way through the, the crazy world of the wrestle wrestle land and you've got to make decisions as you go and there are branching paths and it's it's just it's just good just make a good game yeah <laughs> they've been bad for so long uh so that would be nice if someone made a, a decent game with that property mm -hmm. i would appreciate it but we'll see how the new one is very soon i imagine it's time for a segment that we've created just because Peter's returned from his oh. two-week chaos on the podcast. So, uh, you know, we didn't do this forever before. Mm -hmm. So just a treat for you. It's time to talk about what we're playing. Oh. It's time for what we play in. It's time to talk about what we playing uh peter yeah you've been away yeah have you been playing yeah i appreciate you um coming up with a format about what we've been playing when uh i've not really been around uh much um but i have so i came back on the weekend but i play on the weekend when we flew back into the country before i left we then we did actually play some jackbox at home mm. with the family which Ooh. was nice so uh but i only have party pack one um, so, you know, that's just like fibbage and, and the drawing one and stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, that was, that was fun. Um, in fact, no, we do have another one as well. We have another, it's like number five or something. So we, we played a few different games, but, uh, had a good time with that. And then since I've been back home with access to video games, um, I, the one thing I have played is a little bit more Orcs Must Die actually, because when I was on holiday, I was thinking, I've not played that in a little bit. And I was like, oh, I'd like to go back and just see <laughs> see if I can get fi uh, five. There were a couple of levels, actually, where I'd still not got a perfect five skulls. And I was like, I'm going to do it. Um, and I ended up spending about two or three hours on two levels, just really struggling. Um, but, hey, I enjoyed every moment. I find it very satisfying. It's a big dopamine game, that one. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was great. Um, so you can keep your you can keep your Elden Rings. You know, I I think the idea of Elden Ring sounds sounds difficult and draining. But so if if you if you're judging me at home, right? Because I played three hours, two and a half hours of two levels on Orcs Must Die Three. Well, I found it just as fun as you did dying to the first boss. So Ashton, thanks, Peter. <sighs> I have played one game this week. Can you guess what it is? Horizon. Yeah, I just played that. For Belden Wing. I, yeah, for Belden Wing. Wing. Um, wing, I just <laughs> to say wing. For Belden Wing. <laughs> I didn't play much over the weekend because my parents were here. Um, but I've played it a couple days this week. Actually, I've not played that much this week. I've only played a couple hours Monday and Tuesday night. Um, and yeah, I'm still really enjoying it. I'm having to really force myself to not just finish the story because I'm just... All I want to do is like get to the next story mission and do the next story mission and like just find out what's happening and meet the new characters and stuff. But I really feel like I need to explore the areas that I have left behind right. and not finished. Um, so you still don't know how it ends yet? I'm, I don't no, know no. either, but I'm just saying. No, I've not. I've not finished the game Ooh, yet. Okay. I think I'm. I'm trying to take my time because I'm. I'm worried that i will hate it mm -hmm. so i'm like if i just take my time and you finish the bits and bobs but i don't think i'm gonna hate it the story is really good so far and i've really enjoyed the twists and turns that it's thrown at us um yeah so i'm really enjoying it and i'm really excited to keep playing it um i'm just i'm feeling a bit overwhelmed with it at the moment i think maybe potentially it's a bit too much sometimes i think there's there's it has got this the thing with like you know, not to compare it to Ubisoft games as many people have, but it's got that loads of question marks on the map kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I that's fine. And at first I was like, oh, I'm going to go explore everything. But now I'm like, oh my God, there's a question mark all the way up there that I haven't even looked at yet. I don't even know what I'm going to do. I've got to go here, got to go there. And sometimes I do find that the map's a little bit barren. Like if you go kind of stray a bit far off the 
beaten path. There's not a lot kind of going on. Um, but that's okay. There's, you know, there's a lot of map to kind of cover in animals and um, monsters and stuff. But yeah, I am really enjoying it. And I think it's building on the first game really well. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying it and I'm excited to keep playing it. But I just really want to finish the story. So... Ben, what have you been? I can playing? hear how much you want to I finish. I know, really, want to, really, want, really to want to finish. <laughs> Surely you can keep playing after the story, though, right? Yeah, but I can, but I don't want to miss any side missions or anything. Because in the first game, no. at the end, there's a, obviously a battle. The Avengers big, come. The Avengers together. come together, yeah. and you get a trophy for like having all of your allies at the end. Oh. And I don't want. I'm not. I don't think I'm close to the end. I'm about sixty percent of the way through, according to the in-game kind of percentage marker. Mm -hmm. Um. But I don't think I've got, I feel I've got a couple of story missions left to do, but I'm a bit like, what if, what if I haven't done this side mission and then this person doesn't come and join me at the final battle? Like, what happens then? What you do know, you do then? What happens then? Huh? I mean, I'm going to have to play the whole game again. Um, so oh, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You'd hate that. <laughs> nightmare. Um, so, yeah. No, I get it. I do get it. Mm. And you don't want to Google if there are any of those things yeah. because anything. you might get the spoilies yeah Sp uh, sp spayloy i've tried not even look to look at the trophies <laughs> it's okay i thought it was good i don't even look no, at the trophies didn't. either just in case it's no, that's sensible that's really sensible yeah. uh, they haven't got that wasn't it that they didn't have any hidden trophies i don't know if they've added they them have now. hidden trophies they do okay because there was they've always had hidden trophies i think there was some article that push square posted it may well have been that it was just the trophies are out so be careful but i i seem to believe that there were no hidden trophies maybe briefly so you could just see huh. like sort of quite spoilery I trophies and stuff i don't but, remember seeing them but then again i just ha actively haven't looked so maybe that's why I didn't see it. It's smart. Yeah. You're being smart. What have you been playing, Ben? What do you think? You've been playing Elden Ring. Elden Ring. Orcs must die. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, I have been playing Elden Ring. Mm. Not as much as I would like. Last night was really, this being when Wednesday night I'm talking about because we're recording on Thursday morning, Yeah. Um, was, the, was my first proper time where I could sit down and just like play it because I was away all weekend and then Monday I had a self-care day. And um, <laughs> I just left that pregnant pause there because I uh, I was actually going to talk about it at the top of the show and then I forgot. Um, I ended up buying a lot of things on eBay Yeah. Uh, as a result of this self-care day mm -hmm. that I'm really regretting now. <laughs> and I was going to run through all of, all of the things. Uh, but that means that I didn't have a lot of time to play Elden Ring. And uh, Monday was self-care day. And Tuesday I streamed it and then I came home and I was tired. Mm. Um, and then so last night was my proper proper chance to sit down and I love it it's really 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 good mm -hmm. uh, so I have found like a little area where I can kind of farm runes or souls if you will uh, quite effectively and I was doing that over and over again and then I thought nah I'm gonna go for an explore let's go on a little let's go on a bear hunt right we're not scared yeah so I hopped on my horse and I, fo I just followed a road and I followed it and I came across more and more of this sort of like undead procession of like this really bedraggled army who who were clearly from beyond time or something. There was like standard bearers mm. and some of them had uh, like little horns and they were marching in formation, but they were like weak and rubbish and like all sort of shuffling like they were undead. And so I killed them and I thought, where have these guys come from? And I kept going and eventually I got to this sort of semi-destroyed bridge and there were some slightly better soldiers on it and someone manning or womaning uh, a sort of a, a, ball a ballista thing, mm -hmm. just like firing massive crossbow bolts at me. So I killed all of them, got past, and there was an NPC who was sat there. And she said, oh, I've, I've fled the castle up ahead. And my father, who's the commander, he's decided to stay behind. Would you deliver this letter for me? And I was like, yes, I have a goal now. I know there's a castle up here somewhere. So I went, I went up to the castle, I cleared everything out, I met the man, gave him the 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 letter, then I beat the boss of that area, and I came back and he was like, You've you've beaten the boss of the area, thank <laughs> you. My my job is done. I can go and see my daughter. I then fast traveled back to the daughter, and then like I'm not gonna say anymore, but basically I, I sort of managed to play out practically an entire NPC storyline and find a place to explore with that was full of items and kill a boss by just going down a road mm. and it was all very organic and it felt right and you're always drawn in different directions so I'll I'll be going along this path and then I'll see something off to the left and I'll go right and then my brain sort of splits in two where I <laughs> yeah. think 
got to come back to the path, but you can go over there, but you've got to come back to the path. So I go over there and I do that. And then I find a little mini dungeon. I go down there, beat the boss. And the whole time I think you've got to go back to the path because <laughs> you remember the castle. You've got to go to the castle. So then I'll come back and I'll keep going towards the castle. And then I see something on the right and I'll mm. go do the same thing. I've got to come back to the path. That's the main goal here. You've got to go back to the path. But I'm always being pulled in different directions. There's always something to do. And I haven't really struggled with anything yet. Mm. Like, it's hard. But this is what I've been waiting for. Like, this is... It's it's more... I've been endlessly replaying from software's Soulsborne titles for years. and Because you've had nothing new. Because there's been nothing new to play and Sekiro can get in the bin, yeah. quite frankly. <laughs> um, and so it's just so exciting to, ha to have this, finally. And I have played multiplayer a couple of times. There were a couple of bosses. When I said I didn't struggle, I mean, as in, I wasn't like rage quitting the game yeah um that which can happen <laughs> with the, with this game uh but there were a couple of bits where i just thought life's too short this game's massive i would like some co-op help please and it's super easy to do co-op this game like really explains how all the functions work you don't have to google that much which is a huge huge uh leap forwards for from software titles but i think it's fantastic I've been like having the memes have been amazing as well. I've been loving the memes the algorithm has been serving to me on Twitter. Mm. And what's so nice is that the stuff that's being memed is stuff that's like standard fare for FromSoft titles and has been for ages. Like the messages with the, oh, yeah. Yeah. With the you know, try tongue butthole, try finger butthole, <laughs> dog ahead. And it's like a tortoise because you can only pick from set yeah. messages and stuff. That has been part of the DNA of Soulsborne titles for years. And because this game is that much bigger, has been reviewed that much better and has had that many more players hop in, it's just nice to see more people getting in on this stuff mm -hmm. and like enjoying the, the the thing, not to be like, oh, is that fast? But like to, to, to enjoy the stuff that I've been enjoying for years and mm -hmm. to see it like widely shared and memed and laughed about is great. I'm, I'm really, it's it's a joy to behold. Yeah, because I've heard people even in the office um, or, you know, in our kind of circle of like other creators maybe on social media saying, oh, I'm, I'm not a Soulsborne player at all. Like, like I've, I've never played one of them before. I've only, I played a bit of one and then I kind of quit. Um, but I'm going to give Elden Ring a go. Mm. And, you know, that that's always a good thing to see when like a new installment in a, all right, not a series, but essentially, a, you know, a yeah. spiritual series comes out and it, it brings new people in to enjoy things like that. It's still really tough. Um, but the nature of the open world, <laughs> the the open world nature of the game, you try that to construct that sentence. Mm -hmm. again. The open world nature of the game means that you can just go off and do different things. And... I have seen several videos recommended to me, again, through the algorithm, um, like, oh, here's how you get 120,000 so uh, runes really easily. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to try that when I get home. Actually. Mm -hmm. I think I'll do that. And I'm going to look up how I can upgrade my healing flask and stuff. And I'm going to go off and go do that and experience things on the way. And it's just, it's great. Really, really like it. Mm -hmm. And um, I've, last night was the first, as I said, proper time I popped into it and had like a proper session where I wasn't just playing the area that I played before, you know, in the closed network test. And I've been thinking about it all morning and I want to go home and play it. Mm. <laughs> so, Is there like a, no, it's not like a stupid question. Is there a map that you can like yes. go to and see yeah. where you've been? So, so there's there's a map that it's got like a fog of war on it. And you, right, yeah. you open up more as you go. Um, yeah. But you also find like map fragments or map pieces that actually doesn't, I don't think it reveals the whole map, but it does like give you the topography and like it colors it in because if you're in an area that you've never been to before the fog of war is lifted and you can see the outline of like the shoreline and stuff mm. but it's not like colored in if mm. that makes sense right, and then yeah. you find the map and then it's like you can there's like sketches of buildings on it and stuff right, and okay you can put custom markers on and you can put other custom like icons if you find something interesting you want to come back to you put like a little sword on it there's a there's a scary man here <laughs> come back to the sword man and mm -hmm. kill him at some point mm. so there's there's a lot of map customization and, and things that you can do that just makes finding and remembering where things are that much, and fast travel of course which yeah. makes a huge difference so yeah Elden ring man it sure is I have a question here. Do you? Yeah, it comes from Michael Milan. Michael says, Hey Bap, given how often sex is shown or at least strongly hinted at in TV or movies, why does it still seem to be such a taboo subject in gaming with very few games including it and even then often as a novelty rather than a device for storytelling or character development? Is it because the game is still a relatively... Is it because gaming is still a rel relatively new medium for seri serious narratives? 
or perhaps because the industry still the because of the industry still not having shaken the childish connotations it is commonly associated with. I'd love to hear your thoughts. It looks weird. <laughs> Sex looks weird on video games. Uh, I mean, even kisses look a bit weird still. Mm-hmm. We're, we're better. We're kind of there now, just about with kissing. But... The little sex I've seen in video games has looked weird. Mm. And I think that's part of the reason, honestly. I think it's just odd. It's like seeing two mannequins go at it, and I don't want to <laughs> see that. Um, I also wonder, I don't know I don't know if I agree that it's a case of not having shaken childish connotations with gaming. I don't think that's the case, because all sorts of stuff is covered in gaming now that you wouldn't include in a childish medium. Um, but I wonder if... It's not quite shaken the, as we call it, the stinky cod boy um, thing, even though that there are mm-hmm. far many more kinds of gamers out there now than your typical um, FPS dude bros. I still think that it's something that hasn't quite been shaken from mainstream gaming to an extent. Uh, you know, we we talked about um, I can't remember the context of it recently, but we said about you know there's a, there's still a degree of um, not pandering to because that's that's a bit of a kind of a you know it's like looking down your nose to say that, but um, for a game to be successful, I think developers kind of if if they want it to be mass market, they have to consider all kinds of gamers. And I think that some might worry if there is like a sex scene in a game that that might put off a certain portion of the audience um, in the same way that, you know, I if I saw a sex scene in a film, it wouldn't put me off. I wouldn't be mm. like, oh, turning this off. But if uh, someone said, oh no, we've had to cut the sex scene out of that movie that you're, you're going to go and watch tomorrow, I'd be like, Okay. okay, I don't, yeah. I don't mind. That's fine. I, I, I wasn't, you know, it's not a, a huge part of a narrative for me. As long as I can, if you want to tell a love story, you can do that without a sex scene. Now I'm like, I wouldn't mind one way or the other if a sex scene was included in a game. But uh, you know, I, I wonder if there is an element of like, oh well, we, we just want to have like as much mainstream appeal as possible, and uh, some. Hashtag stinky cod boys might mm-hmm. think, uh, <laughs> why is there a sex scene in my game? This is like, well, really, they, like they might be like, really like yeah, there's a sex scene. It might be game. like that. Ooh. There's, there's totally an argument for the for the opposite. So I'm not I'm not as convinced with that argument. I think it is mostly just because it looks strange and it's difficult to do mm. and and have like an actual emotional um, moment when you've you've got people made out of polygons having sex. <laughs> so that's my main main answer. I think. Not to uh, be a bit of a prude, but I don't really like sex scenes in TVs and movies right. anyway. I think that like the implication of that kind of thing is like hot enough that I don't feel like it needs to be included. You don't need to see it. I don't yeah. need to like see two people pretend to have sex on my screen. Um, however, I don't mind. Like I like you say, I wouldn't like be like, oh my god, I hate this movie. There's a sex scene in it, and I just more be like, oh. They're having sex. Okay. Um, But I think the issue with sex in video games is the level of control you have in video games. Mm. Like you're kind of involved. Yeah, it's like a vicarious thing. Like, I don't know if you, uh, I don't know if you did in Heavy Rain, but there's a sex scene in Heavy Rain where you have to do QTEs to have sex with woman. And that kind of is a bit like, mm, I feel a bit like you're kind of involved in this fake sexual intercourse that Mm -hmm. these two not real people are having um and i also think that it's just kind of like not done very well like you're saying in most things um heavy rain yeah heavy rain i mean far cry 3 had a sex scene but it was not too it wasn't necessarily about the sex it was kind of about some bits of the story so it wasn't too bad i still can't understand i understand why in terms of narrative but i wish that the sex scene in the last of us 2 wasn't in it it was so much oh, yeah. more I forgot about that. like i was kind of sat there being like oh, God. Uh. i felt like i was like <laughs> actually in the room yeah. watching mm. them do they it. were just so close to it and i was like oh, gee i hope no one walks in right now because yeah. this is kind of weird but i just i do remember just kind of being like i've been controlling this character the whole time and i've 
this character is someone that I've kind of made make decisions or kind of made do things. Mm. And now they're like boning. And that kind of makes me feel a bit weird. Um, but I also think that it is a little bit of the stigma about horny gamers and like, and not to generalize, but, you know, stinky, sweaty gamer boys mm. who are in their basements and like just want to watch their anime gals jiggle their boobies around for some games. I just, I think that for me, I think there's a line between whether it is gratuitous and therefore hitting that kind of, that audience of being like, if we put a sexy sex scene in, or if we have a woman with big chest, like big boobies and who just moans the whole way through, that will really sell this game to stinky sweaty boys. Mm. But if we put this sex scene in, it makes the, what person who's being sexualized, the woman, for example, makes that kind of whole female audience be like, oh, this feels a bit, feels a bit like wrong. Don't mm -hmm. really like this. Um, so I think it's hard to find that middle ground. Like I say, I don't really care for them in movies and TV shows either, but I just think in video games, it's just a bit too much. Maybe that's just me being a bit of a prude, but I just feel like, I just don't feel like it needs it. You know, most of the time you're playing a video game, you're not really in an environment that, or a story that constitutes, you know, a sex scene happening. You know, you're in a zombie apocalypse. You're in the wilderness hunting for a deer or something. You're in a, a medieval time where something bad's happening. Normally, I don't feel like we have the time to bone that's true but um but people do but be they horny do. though they do be horny in the apocalypse you have to you yeah. are right and for some people it's only a sort of 45 second that's uh, true experience. it doesn't take a so. long time so well i mean if we're not we seeing them time. do their peas and poops why are we seeing them yeah. do the do the sex and soups yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> but yeah that's yeah that's what i have to say let's talk about bad sex scenes in games huh? Mm -hmm. let's talk about that heavy rain where you awkwardly take off your cardboard shirt. Let's talk about um, uh, what's the motorbike game? Ride to Hell Retribution, Ride to Hell Retribution. where they have the sex, sex fully clothed. Yeah. Yes, ah. where they do that. What about Playboy? Uh, let's talk the about Playboy. Game. Let's talk about Monoax. Uh, <laughs> Sims Woohoo. Yeah. Let's talk about Sims Woohoo. Let's talk about um, Indigo Prophecy or Fahrenheit if you want to get European mm -hmm. about this or outside of America about this. Celsius. Um, where not only is there a sex scene, but you, you, the, it is a QTE. Quick time event, and you have to thrust in time with the music, and it's awful. And it's just the it's the worst thing I've ever been forced to partake in in a video game. Because there's your pride, which is can't miss any buttons. Yeah, because then I'll, <laughs> then I'll be a bad gamer. But there's also the rest of your brain that says, "Wow, this is really this is really messed up, dude." Hot that coffee. That's this. another one. Hot coffee. Press square to change position or whatever button it was it's just it's goofy and like just sex, sex is like <laughs> sex is weird and funny in real life anyway like it's just it's objectively a strange thing mm. but it just doesn't we don't as you say i don't think we need it there are games that do it well but they allude to it they don't mm. show penetration you yeah. know like mass effect and the witcher mm. that you see bits and but you see bobs and bits yeah. But you don't see everything and you don't need to. Like just a fade to black is fine. You can show a little bit of action if you like, but I, I agree. I think the Last of Us Part Two sex scene was just like that know, was so out there. It was really play, unexpected. Show well, a bit of like say, the build up, but we don't need to watch the penetration. Show, still has, show them waking up lovingly in each other's arms. That's how a lot of TV and uh, movies do it as yeah. well. Like they don't actually have sex that's scenes. In another it. note that I've written here: not every film and TV show has sex in it, and so for the same, and not every adult TV show and film has sex. Well, in even it. For the, the same reason, neither neither games don't need that either. But even where people are sleep having sex and sleeping with each other, they would just show like a bit of foreplay. You know, people yeah. get into bed. Maybe, maybe they do like, the keys keys. They do. A they keys, knock keys. over a nightstand or a lamp. Yeah, they take know? their clothes off, and then I mean, you don't see that. You know, they maybe get as far as that. And then it cuts away. Or you see a nip. Or you see maybe a nip. You see, maybe, maybe you see right. some boy nips. You I'm see not, some girl nips. I'm not anti bobs. We're not anti. No. <laughs> we're not anti bobs, bobs on this channel. Okay. <laughs> and then maybe anyway, we're pro nip. Yeah. A, a Actually, fake. I think female nipples are disgusting, yeah, and they too. should all be. Only male nipples should be shown. Male nipples are great, as we've said yeah. before. And then a fade to black or a, a zoom out from the bedroom window yeah. or something. <laughs> exactly through the window. Yeah. You hear the glass subtly smashing as yeah. you go through. Um, yeah. So I just. 
as you say, video games, they're not a passive medium for a start. Mm. So if sex is sex and sexual relationships are going to be shown in video games, it's a real it's a whole can of worms if you're going to have it be interactive. Mm. I don't think it's necessary. It should never be interactive, no and matter what you do. if it isn't, never. it can be hinted at or it can just be, here's a bit of nip, here's a cheeky bit of nip. We don't need to see everything. Um, it's There is also the aspect, as you say, Peter, about marketing these games. Certain territories just won't allow that. That's true. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. You will not be able to sell your game in that region, with even with a little bit of nip. Um, that's going to have to be censored uh, for, for whatever reason. Final thing that I've just realized mm -hmm. is that as we have more and more actual real people play these characters, be they uh, yeah. uh, facial capture, even if it's just facial capture, as as in the case of uh, Jodie Holmes or um, Elliot Page in Beyond Two Souls, that was just his face. It's he, him, right? Yeah. Yes. It was Elliot, just his yeah. his face. And I, I think it was like a rough estimation of his body. Mm. It wasn't like a body scan. But people were able to hack the files. And basically, with his actual face on whatever, you know, a completely inaccurate body, you would assume, mm. um, they would have a, a nude a nude model of this actor. Well, it's the deep fakes, isn't it? As soon as you, as soon as you kind of give the that ability to kind of like move someone's face in a way that is not the way that they're moving it. Yeah. You know, you you put that face can go on anything. A lot of actors that are, aren't going to want to sign up for that. They're not going to want to risk that as much as they will get their their bare naked ass out <laughs> in front of a cast and crew to film something in real life. Mm. The 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 permanence of having a digital version of yourself out there that people could mess with. I mean, some people Unless may you're not Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves, who actually he's is all kind in. of really into he's, it. He's he actually like, super yeah, into it. Yeah, have sex with my cyberpunk yeah, character. But cool. that's another thing. That's another big sell. If you're, especially, you know, as, as we get more and more of these, of like these big actors involved in games, apart from Keanu Reeves, who apparently is absolutely <laughs> fine with it, more and more of them are going to, are going to not be up for that. They're going to want to play it safe, especially in a medium that they may not necessarily be too familiar with. Also, mm. I think like doing a sex scene for, in a movie or TV show is very different than standing in an audio booth and moaning as yeah, if you are in a sex scene. <laughs> yeah. It's very true. Very so. true. I agree with you, Ashton, as well. When I read the question yesterday, I, I meant to also write down as notes that when you've been playing as the character, that character is an avatar. Like, you mm. you are them. They are you. Even if it's not an RPG and it's, it, it's a very defined character, you still feel like you are them. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a TV show... Or a movie, there's, a there's level still of like escapism and like maybe a touch of like vicariousness, but there is a there is a distance. You still feel like an audience member when you're watching a mm. film, but playing a game, you kind of feel like that's you or mm. you are them. And then to see them have sex is like, all right, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. And going back to what you said, Peter, it just ages horribly. Yeah, like the, the games are coming along leaps and bounds every year, and I know we're starting to plateau a little bit. But you look at a game in five years compared to now, and there will be a big difference. Mm. Mm. And you look at the sex scenes in the leaked stuff for the hot coffee mod for San Andreas. You look at it from uh, Indigo Prophecy or Fahrenheit. You look at it in Heavy Rain. The Heavy Rain sex scene is so awkward. Yeah, I really like that really their mouths are just kind of doing this. Exactly. Yeah. But I remember at the time being like, "This is." Art. This is. <laughs> it's never going to get any better. They put an adult suit in a game. This is. This is just. This David Cage is going to go really far. Delete Pornhub. Uh, this is all we this need. This is it. This is like. This is the. This is peak acting, and the medium is going no further forwards than this. And then we fast forward to when Peter and I streamed it in 2020, mm. 2019. 19, yeah. And it was like that is the one of the worst. There's so much about this game that looks awful now. Um. So there's also that again. The real world actors are probably going to tie into that. Like, am I going to look really stupid in five years? Yeah. Yes, you are. You actually are. Um, so it's all about subtlety, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. You don't, you don't, we don't need full penetration in games. We can Kiss, imagine nip, it. Fade to black. Maybe a bit of ass. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of bobs if you're feeling fancy. There was yeah. a winkle wonkle, wasn't there, in the uh, A Way Out? You got, you saw some real jinkles, you did didn't see you? Some yes. Jinkles. Yeah, there was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but was... it wasn't doing sexy things, it was just there. Just there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. There we are. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. move on. That was a strange discussion, wasn't it? 
Uh, we've got a question from Rock Reese. Are uh, you shut oh, your no mouth, Austin? Oh, it's the first time for everything. That was a big jump there. <laughs> Whoa. He's jumped on my... Have you jumped an entire page? Yeah, I turned yeah, the page. Turned the pa I watched him turn the page a minute ago, but I thought he was just kind of preparing, and I thought, <laughs> hmm, do you reckon he's skip weird news? An entire, I didn't just do a Ben where I... <laughs> just went straight to the news. Yeah. It's weird news. Oh, I wasn't ready. It's weird news time. Time for some weird video game news. Uh, remember, you can send us your your own weird news that you managed to find around the internet. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just preparing. On why are you holding your paper up like I'm that? I'm just preparing to read it. <laughs> I'm just preparing. On Facebook and <laughs> I'm sorry. On Facebook and Twitter, um, <laughs> we do a post sort of early in the week, and you can reply to that or comment underneath it and give us your strange news. Of course, weird news is brought to you by our fantastic podcast producers. If you'd like to become a podcast producer, go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump to find out how. Peter, kick us off. Alex McDonald. Caden Agronox. Check it Omega. Sean Legg. G.Y. Goliath. Katie Garrett. Ellie Nicholas. Erica Hutchinson. Melody L. Burnett. Corey Duffel. And Gabrielle Philippink. Fantastic. And thank you so much, thank podcast you. Thank producers. Thank you, podcast producers. Peter, have you got some strange video game news? You've got, to, you've got to do three because you missed oh, two wow. episodes. So that's how it's it. got a three in it, if that helps. Close enough. Mm. It's according to Nintendo Live. It was sent by Fergus Jeffs via our Facebook uh, post requesting weird news. Random. Random. Colon. These sausages could imply the existence of a third Mario brother. I really want to do this weird news, but Peter beat me to it. It's, it's a sad. it's a good headline. Um, it's a short article and actually is barely gaming related and and okay. is is not it's nothing. It's not even the subheading under that. So could imply the existence of a third Mario brother. It then says. They don't, but they could. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So that's kind of, we've already peaked with this yeah. story, but I will just read it. Okay. This person, I think, also wrote the Kirby article that you read a couple of weeks ago, the mouthful mode one. Oh, yeah, they oh, just yeah. didn't really say anything at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all they've done here is uh, someone's done a funny tweet and they've just written an article about it. That's fair. It's a snow, snow slow day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mario Mario and Luigi Mario are the undisputed icons of Nintendo's long-running Super Mario series. Bit of context Is Luigi's there, surname we? Wow. Well, they're the Mario brothers, yeah, the aren't Ma they? Yeah. So, so Luigi and Mario's parents named Mario. Mario Mario. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. like Neville Neville. Isn't it, imp isn't it implied that the parents... Are uh, from the first Donkey Kong game. Jump Is that man. right? Jump man. Jump man and, and who? And Lady Jump. She's got princess, no. She's got a spe She's not a princess. Or something. She's got a proper name. I can't remember what it is. Someone in the comments will be yelling. I, I think it is might that be implied. Is I think it, I don't think it's canon. But uh, sorry, did Nintendo Life feel the need to point out the fact that those two are? Yeah, this iconic. Nintendo Life. <laughs> Imagine being on NintendoLife.com <laughs> and reading an article and not knowing. They're just padding out the word count, aren't they? A little bit. Um, <laughs> but what if they had a secret long lost brother <gasps> called Pablo? Pablo Mario. Pablo Mario. This photo of some innocent sausages might seem like a no like naught but a coincidence, but we know that Nintendo loves creative marketing and fun ways to tease their new game. Let's see the sausages. Why please. not sausages? <laughs> Why not? Why? Sausage. Full stop. Not. Full stop. Sausages. Sausage. Yeah. Full stop. Can I see the sausages, please? Yeah. Just loading the tweet. Yeah. There will be a link beneath the video. Uh, what? That one's called Mario. Yeah. That one's called Pablo. Oh, that one's called Mario. That one's called Pablo. And those are called Luigi. What I'm learning called. about the brothers is that Luigi is by far the least popular brother. <laughs> yeah. Pablo right. is more popular. There's so the many Luigi sausages there. In the, in the well, I'll tell you all green about flavor. <laughs> this. <laughs> Um, so there is a, then a tweet embedded into the article by at Moriani uh, on Twitter who says, all of the Mario Bros as sausages, dot, dot, dot. And there is a photo then of just a supermarket shelf somewhere. Uh, what currency are we dealing with here? Doesn't the say. Uh, it just has numbers and no actual currency symbol. But um, there are some sausages with a label that say Luigi, some that say Mario, and some that say Pablo. Are these official Nintendo sausages? Well, 
Don't let uh, don't tell us that this isn't an accident on the sausage company's behalf. Isn't an accident. They've done that wrong. Don't tell us that this isn't an accident. No, that makes sense. No, they're, no, so they're don't tell it's us it's, an, it's accident. an accident. This is on purpose. Don't tell us it's an accident. But they've got it wrong. <laughs> don't tell us that this isn't an accident on the sausage company's behalf. They've even made Luigi green and Mario red. And that's true. The font. Oh, wow. Colors. Yeah, no, they have got that wrong. Pa- I wasn't sure where the rest of the sentence yeah. was going. <laughs> Pablo, however, is orange, which would be a welcome new color in the Mario verse. What are you talking about? <laughs> and There's then, actually canonically no orange in any Mario no. game. So if you'd ever noticed that. And then imagine we could have Wa Pablo alongside Waluigi and Wario. He would be blue. And since Wario is short and stinky, and Waluigi is tall and weirdly flirty, Wa Pablo could be shy and medium sized. <laughs> What on earth is happening? Is this important news? No, not in the slightest. Do we like speculating about sausages? Absolutely. Source twitter.com. That's the end of the article. But hang on. Right. So this, they're not even Nintendo sausages. No, it's just just that someone saw that by coincidence, a a presumably Italians, uh, maybe not even Italian, but a sausage brand somewhere names their sausages. One of them was called Mario, one's called Luigi, and in the middle, there were some Pablo sausages. They then took a photo because they thought, that's funny, that's a bit like if there was a third Mario brother. Yeah. They tweeted it, the tweet went, I, maybe, I didn't see the numbers, but maybe it went semi-viral, and then Nintendo Life were like, I'm going to write an article about that, I'm going to say that it implies that's stupid. third brother. That's so stupid. So that's one of those weird newses where it's almost weird that it has been the turned Nintendo into Nintendo Life turned that into an article. Yeah. What are you do? What's going on over there? Random. Ashton. Random. Thank you, Peter. Weird news, Thanks, please. Peter. You're welcome. Um, this comes from cbennett underscore 12 on Twitter, and it comes from Roadshow. Roadshow. By CNET is the website. Mm, okay. Toyota Yaris GT7 Edition might be the easiest way to get a PS5. Getting a free PS5 with your new car is probably less expensive than what some scalpers are charging. Are we still doing this song and dance about how much scalpers are charging? It's not that much. It's not that much than the full price. It's like 500. It's really, it's not that Mm, much of a big deal anymore. Some of them are like a grand. Some people are buying from the wrong scalpers. I don't really care how much more. I I don't even care if they're only charging like 50 quid. I just think... Screw him. Screw him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, screw him. But also, PS5s aren't that hard to find. I just, I feel like just, anyway, carry on. Mm. Just if- tired of it. I'm just tired of it, okay? Just buy a PS5. Sorry, Ashton, do continue. Can I go this time or are you going to talk over me? I might talk. I haven't decided yet. Okay. If you thought trying to get your hands on a PlayStation 5 console was difficult now, just wait until the latest iteration of the Hallowed Gran Turismo racing series is released next month. Well, this month, really. Mm. Thankfully, Toyota Espana has come up with a clever way to skip the line at your local GameStop. Motor One reports, and all you have to do is buy a car. (laughs) Toyota Espana (laughs) this week announced a limited edition Toyota Yaris GR Sport GT7 edition, available on March 4th, the day of the game's release. Only 100 units will be built, each carrying special touches like Gran Turismo badging on the exterior, an Mm. interior nameplate, and a personalized key fob. But the real neat part is it is what comes with the car. Buyers not only get the Yaris, but also get a PS5, a copy of Gran Turismo 7, a second wireless controller, and a three-month subscription to PlayStation Plus. Wow. About a $665 value in total. How much is the car, is the question. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a bone stock Toyota Yaris, which is not a bad thing to get alongside a PS5. <laughs> the small ha- this small hatchback has a gas-electric hybrid powertrain producing a... Thrifty, 116 horsepower. This is just about the car. Mm. Bored now. Bored now. Um, <laughs> How much? How much for the car? It doesn't Can we guess? say. Oh. What the heck? Why I doesn't it say? 17,000 pounds. A brand new Yaris. Yeah. Mm. That's Based a... on no prior knowledge at all. I'd, yeah, I'd say something like that. Maybe. Mm. Doesn't say. How do I find out how much a car costs? What a rubbish article. <sighs> you probably if there's only a hundred made, then. you probably have to like apply or something and then they'll and then they'll tell you. I don't know. Twenty two thousand uh, dollars. I don't Maybe. know how much it costs. Damn. Sorry. I think with all the bonuses, they probably charge a bit extra and probably you probably don't even get your money's worth. No. Um, probably not. It's mm. probably like twenty 
20 grand. Oh, it says literally at the bottom. Toyota España did not disclose a price for this special edition, Mm -hmm. but considering it's limited to 100 examples and it's only available in Spain, perhaps you should abandon your tent outside Best Buy. Perhaps you shouldn't abandon your tent outside Best Buy just yet. Mm So you can buy a car and it comes with a PlayStation 5 and Gran Turismo. Right. Nice. If you're lucky and in Spain. And wealthy. Also, you don't need a tent outside Best Buy. Just, just buy one. Just go on the internet. Just go on the internet and you'll find one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just get a Fraser Porter yeah. and they can hook yeah. you up with whenever up. there's a PlayStation 5 available. Everybody I know who wants a PS5 has one. Mm. Yeah. It's I not, it's not that hard anymore. It's not that. You can do it. I believe in you. If you haven't got one yet and you want one, you can, you do, can it. do it. I actually, I really do believe in you. Just follow the stock informer of tweets. And your dreams. <laughs> and your dreams. And your dreams. <laughs> yeah, follow at your dreams on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yes. To find a PlayStation 5. Mm-hmm. That is how it works. Do you have some weird news, Ben? I do actually, Ashton. Thank you. That's okay. Uh, this, yeah, you're welcome. This weird news comes from Gex. No, you're welcome. Oh. From Gex. Ooh, shush, no. Uh, this comes from Gex at <laughs> Snowy Boy, oh, y- Jesus, all right, Peter. Oh. Snowy boy, Yanni. Oh, as soon as I realized it wasn't from Gex himself, I got really bored. Just not interested in what Gex has to say. Yeah. Thank you, Gex, for this weird news. This comes from PC Gamer. Thank you, Gex. Konami let the SilentHill.com domain expire and some joker bought it. Right. This joker. This flippid joker is from Jody McGregor. It's not the first time the company let this happen, but it is the funniest. <laughs> The fact that publisher... I think it's Kona- not going to be funny. Well, we'll see. I think it's going to be hilarious. You, better, you best be holding on to your sides because they're about to split. The fact that publisher Konami doesn't really care about Silent Hill or its legacy is basically a meme at this point. The series seemingly relegated to perpetual limbo in the form of DLC for unrelated multiplayer games. <laughs> the publisher has now let its ownership of the, of silent, of the SilentHill.com domain name lapse long enough for someone else to buy it. An example of how little Konami cares. So point... What? So, an example of how little Konami cares so pointed that if a satirist came up with it, you'd think it was a little on the nose. Oh. <laughs> Had to take a few run-ups at that, that run sentence. Run-ups. Run, <laughs> a run-nuptial Leave agreement. Leave me alone. This isn't even the first time Konami forgot to renew its registration. In December of 2019, SilentHill.com was spotted on sale for $9,835, but nobody was quick enough to grab it before Konami. This time, some cashed up troll, it says, <laughs> got in there. And now if you type silenthill.com into your web browser of choice, you'll end up on a page showing a tweet from Masahiro Ito that says, I wish I hadn't designed f- flipping pyramid head, it says. Wow. That's a real tweet, by the way. Ito was art director on uh, Silent Hill 2, creating the monster that would go on to be too iconic for its own good, seeing so much reuse that reuse that Ito said in a now deleted tweet, what is that noise? <laughs> I've been trying to ignore it. There's a really yeah. strange buzzing noise coming from our lights. I think it's coming from behind the lights, actually. I thought it was coming from the, the electric That electricity on the wall. box on the wall. Okay. Okay, well, we'll just pretend that that's fine, mm-hmm. right? Just don't touch anything magical. Try not to be too, too distracted by it. Mm-hmm. Uh, too iconic for its own good in a now deleted tweet. To use Pyramid Head in many titles make py- makes Pyramid Head cheaper. So there we are. It continues mm. like that. Um, while Konami blithely, this article, while Konami blithely lets Silent Hill drift off into the fog, the first game's director and why does websites do that? Massive, <laughs> massive advert that obscured the rest of the article. <laughs> so there we are. We'll <laughs> never know what it says. Uh, because reading websites on mobile is an absolute nightmare. Indeed. Thank you. That is weird news. Let's move on to question three, for which Peter was so prepared. So, very prepared. So prepared. Hey, guys, Rock Reese has sent question three. I love Aww, that guy. Thanks, Rock Reese. says, hey, boys and gal, with hearing different things about Horizon, some saying it's great, others saying everything good about the sequel is already in Zero Dawn, full stop. <laughs> Ashton <laughs> needs a chance to, re- to to offer a rebuttal to that. Oh, um, I was going to do that in answer to the question. Okay. Okay. Uh, You're okay to wait? Because I can tell you're very cross. (laughs) She's going to flip the whole table. (laughs) New sentence. I pose the question to you. Semicolon. What is a... (laughs) (laughs) Or a Microsoft Sam. What is a sequel supposed to do in your eyes? Does it need to innovate? Can small additions make the whole difference? Is more of the same a bad thing if it's good? Thank you, Rock Reese. Good question. Thanks, Rock Reese. Thank you, Rock Reese. 
Uh, Your opinion is wrong, or someone's opinion is wrong about Horizon, but other than that. Right, yeah, I agree. Uh, (laughs) Having not played it. Having not played it. No, but I agree (laughs) that... um, I've seen some of the stuff that people are saying online. In fact, even before the game came out, they did, they've done it with um, God of War as well, oh, where they've said... real negative Nancys out there, aren't they? They've done side-by-sides side of, like, the get-into-boat animation. Oh, and oh. Her, her, like, rappelling down. Well, yeah, do you remember down. the debacle regarding Spider-Man when there were fewer puddles and it was just that the screenshots were taken at different times of day yeah. and in different weather? Yeah. People, th- people, as the famous philosopher Taylor Swift once said, <laughs> throw rocks at things that shine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's because it's popular, <laughs> and for some reason, that's enough yeah. for them to not want, want it to succeed. It makes me sad, like for reals, when people slag off Horizon. Your wife. Where, I <laughs> yeah. get actually sad because I'm like, I'm enjoying it, and it makes me feel bad because people well, say people. that the game is bad, and I'm like, no, I'm really enjoying the game. <laughs> Leave me alone. But even, I would say, even if um, games don't innovate massively, it mm. doesn't have to be a bad thing. As long as there's an interesting new story mm-hmm. uh, that is being told, it can be within that world. I mean, you talk about uh, Spider-Man. You know, Miles Morales wasn't a, a huge step up, really, from the first game. I know they added the... Uh, it was the, a 1.5, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a 1.5. Um, but I've got some other examples here, like Uncharted 1 to 3, I think incrementally didn't innovate hugely from one to two and then from two to three. I think from one to three, you can then see more of a difference. Mm. But, you know, it didn't it didn't step up massively, I wouldn't say, bit by bit. Um, I disagree, but do continue. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that in these examples, I've got, I've got a couple more, that mm. new mechanics weren't added. For example, I've got uh, the start of Portal 2. Um, essentially, that's just Portal. The, the gameplay I'm talking about yeah. here in, in Portal, you know, there's it's more cinematic um, and you've got interesting characters and stuff. And then towards, as the game goes on, you then have all the, the gels and stuff. So it did eventually, you know, get further. But the, even the beginning of Portal 2, I enjoyed that just for being more Portal. Um, likewise, Halo 3. Yeah, okay, it, it, there were a few additional mechanics, but it, it wasn't a huge step up, I don't think, uh, in terms of innovation. Um and I think those cases show that you don't necessarily have to uh, completely reinvent a game when you create a sequel uh, in order for it to be worthwhile or enjoyable or good quality. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I can't specifically talk for Horizon other than a few of the stupid social media posts I've seen. Mm. She does have um, a beard, though, which is weird, isn't yes. it? Yeah, she so does have a beard. Disgusting, right? Ew. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> wouldn't want to have one of those. No, no right? But I mean, t- to answer Rock, we- Rock Reese's question directly, <laughs> can small additions make the whole difference? Yeah, I think they can. I think it, all it takes is to make sure that it's not an identical game, and then provided you've got an interesting new story, new new motivations, maybe a new character, mm-hmm. that can be enough. It doesn't have to be that when you make a sequel, it has to be a brand new game mm. completely rebuilt from the ground up. Yeah. We talked about this a bit when we talked about Spider-Man a couple of, I think, months ago now, about how, like, it's the same map, the same location, yeah. and yet still, like, the game is a different game. The story is different. I think, I don't think, I think sometimes people expect a game to be a completely brand from the ground up new game, but that's not a sequel then. Like if you've got the same character and the the character looks the same, she just looks like for Horizon, she's got the same mechanics in some senses. You know, the repel is still the same animation. She might have the same animation for certain kind of things that she does, but that's just because what's the point in remaking animations that work and do the job? And I also think that, what a sequel should do is build on the existing character, the existing story, existing universe, and just fix any fix slash upgrade any mechanics that have in the time between the sequels been upgraded and done better elsewhere. Like I think, if anything, Horizon didn't do as much in terms of like mechanic wise. No, that's a lie. I'm speaking of one specific mechanic that I think that they should have fixed, but didn't. Whereas you have to make Aloy pick up everything individually. You can't just like hold triangle and she picks everything Uh, in the vicinity up. That I kind of thought they were going to change, but they didn't. But there's so much different mechanics in the new game that some people might say there's too much change because if you love a game, you don't want the game to then be a completely different playing experience when you play the second game. So I think there's a lot of kind of like 
hate on on developers in sort of doing similar things from game to game but you like you don't want a whole new game you love the game that came out in the first place you don't want them to completely re create the game so that you don't even recognize the play style you can't play it the same um so Take even longer to develop as exactly, well exactly exactly and i think horizon builds on the story and the characters that you meet and the universe really well i think there is you know like i said mechanics that are the same and animations that are the same but that is to be expected in a game that is the same franchise the same game just progressing on further um i don't think it needs to innovate if it doesn't benefit the series or the game specifically you don't want to like you know, suddenly Aloy can like she has a jetpack and she can just you know has a jetpack. So they're like, oh, we'll just give her a jetpack because then she can fly and and you'll really like that, right? And you're like, why does Aloy have a jetpack now? She doesn't. It's a need sequel. A She's got to have a jetpack. Yeah. Um, innovate. Yeah, <laughs> innovate. So I just think that small additions do make a big difference, and there is examples where games have gone from one like version to an extremely kind of different version of a sequel but i don't necessarily think that's always a good thing and i think that most games it depends again with most things it depends on the game and it depends on what kind of thing uh, players are expecting but i think a sequel should just build on what was good about the first game and make upgrades to things that have changed since the first game came out mm -hmm. so there horizon is just as good as the first game. And I think the story is potentially a little bit better. Wow. Whoa. So there. So there. Internet. Take that. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose it's kind of a case of, do you want more of the same or do you agree with bigger is always better? Because mm -hmm. I think there's severe issues with both of those stances. What if both? What if both? What uh, if middle? middle? More of the same and yeah. bigger. I yeah. Don't, yeah, I mean, that's always an option, but that's that's part of my problem with a lot of sequels sometimes. It's just, we're going bigger than ever before. We're just going to we're just gonna give you more and more and more until you can't even, you don't even have enough time to finish it. And it's I like, that's, that's not a good thing anymore do that. for me. Stop doing that. And if it's a game that was always massive in the first place, then yeah, I suppose it makes sense. The next game would be huge as well. Um but it's it's really tricky because I think to an extent you have to take it on a case by case basis. If The Elder Scrolls Six was set in exactly the same map as Skyrim, we'd be like, "What? Yeah, what the hell have you? What what are you doing there?" But if Spider Man Two takes place in the same map as Spider Man One, that makes sense. That's logical. That's mm -hmm. fine. That's mm -hmm. that's totally okay. I imagine there'll probably be a bit of the new God of War that takes place in exactly the same map because that's where the flipping teleporty thing is that takes you to the different realms yeah. and i imagine you'll just be going to different realms um i've reviewed games in the past where and i've obviously played we've all played games where you will you will start them up and they're a sequel and, and you you sort of get the impression that man this just this just feels exactly like the first game like mm. it feels like there's no real progress made so i think that there there really can be an issue in some instances with games that have a sequel that don't really do anything new, that they are just kind of the same. And it's difficult to sort of quantify that without actually experiencing it there and then. Like you can you can play that and identify there that this is this is not that impressive for a sequel. But I couldn't point out I couldn't point at something that's coming up or that has just come out, for example, and be like, that's just more of the same. Boo to that. Uh, and likewise or that i suppose that, that on the total opposite end of the spectrum if you're a huge fan of a game and you do just want more maybe a sequel that is just more of the same isn't a bad thing as long as mm. as you say it has a new story and yeah. new characters and it just like i've said before on this podcast that if they did a dark souls 4 that came out two years after dark souls 3 and it was fundamentally exactly the same from a game playing experience it was just set in a new place and had different bosses but graphically it was identical i'd have been totally fine with that yeah but it's not what it's not common in the industry for that to happen developers go away for maybe five six seven years sometimes and make something entirely new if we did make games like miles morales or this hypothetical dark souls 4 that that had a much shorter turnaround we'd be getting sequels to our favorite games all the time but 
I think just that the standards are set so high, clearly by people who make stupid criticisms of Horizon and other other games, um, that perhaps it's just that it maybe the ship has already it's it's going to be too difficult to turn it around. That's just kind of where we are. Mm. Games always need to be shinier, bigger, better, and indie games aren't beholden to that, obviously. Mm. But I suppose it also matters if there's been a new console generation in between since the last sequel. Yeah. If a game comes out and then the next console generation, obviously this doesn't apply to PC, releases, then maybe they're, maybe the expectations are justified that things need to be new and shinier and better rather than it just runs at 60 frames now. But mm. even then, like, you could justify, you, you could argue that it would only you would only expect it to be kind of uh, technically better like graphically and, and performance wise like maybe no loading screens or whatever mm -hmm. if we're talking about current gen um but i wouldn't necessarily expect from one console generation to the next that mechanically uh that, that there really ought to be like huge innovation oh yeah no 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 giving Aloy a jetpack just because it's yeah, on ps5 exactly, like that's yeah. that's it's not necessary it's a difficult just give her a beard yeah just give her a beard that's it we have the beard technology now yeah it's really difficult, as I said, it's really difficult to quantify. It is on a case-by-case -case basis, series by series. If we're talking sequels specifically, then we are talking series that already exist. And I think if, if a game comes out in a popular series that it is more of the same, but it's taken them five years to do it, I think questions are justifiably going to be asked. But there's a good chance that if you're a huge fan of that series anyway, yes, the critical reception might suffer a bit, but you'll probably still really enjoy it. Mm. As long as, as you say, quality of life improvements made elsewhere in similar genres are at least reflected a little yeah. bit. It doesn't still have the same issues uh, that it, you know, that particular genre had five years ago mm. uh, because things move on and you need to you need to adapt at least uh, from a quality of life perspective, I think. It's time for the big discussion. Is it? Is it? <laughs> wow, it's been just a real lack of conversation <laughs> leading into know. sections today. <laughs> I didn't know if you were going to say something. I didn't know you were finished. That was it. I was all done. Sorry. That's fine. It's not your fault. It's big discussion time. Time for the big video game podcast discussion. This week's big discussion comes courtesy of Richard May Major, who asks, Hello, BAP. B-A and P? Question mark. He's here. There he is. Him here. Him here. There's been so much Elden Ring coverage, but I'm pretty sure I won't like it because it'll be too hard and frustrating for me. This is giving me significant FOMO. What's a FOMO, Ashton? Fear of missing out, Ben. Have you ever... One. Thank you. Have you... What? I knew that Peter one. Peter knew that one. Yeah, so did I. I was just... Uh, uh. Okay. Uh, sorry. Have you ever... What's FOMO, Ashton? Fear of missing out. Have you ever had FOMO about a game or similar that you knew you just wouldn't like you love like. to you wouldn't or, like full, full stop. stop love to you all thank you sir there's no punctuation in there <laughs> thank you richard you ever you ever seen a game come out and you like you thought wow I, i'm well, really want to get swept up in the hype and i can't elden ring i see everyone playing it and everyone's talking about it and i'm like i know that i will have a terrible time mm. and i just won't be able to get into it and i just i'm very aware of that but i see everyone playing it and i'm like Damn it! See, the, that, I just want to play. I just want to be involved in the conversation. I don't though. Like, it doesn't bother me at all because I know that I wouldn't. I won't yeah. like it. I would. I've only ever had FOMO for things for exclusives that are, are on a console that I don't have, mm. uh, or you know, maybe for. I've got an example here: World of Warcraft that came out when I was of an age where I kind of I I couldn't just get that myself and pay for it it would have had to be like dad can i please can i have world of warcraft and because it was a monthly subscription mm. that's just I, I i wasn't allowed it or i don't think i even asked if i'd asked i might have actually got it but i was like he's not going to pay every month for me to play this game i was like with club penguin so yeah, yeah. so, so I, you know people talked a lot about <laughs> world of warcraft i'd played a lot of warcraft 3 and i thought that's a game that i probably really enjoy playing with my friends never played it and at this point i'm not going to start playing wow like you mm. know years and years into the lore um i guess the same with uncharted as well i talked about it in the previous question but uh you know that was ps3 um at the time and i didn't have one I, uh, uh 360 and i thought that game looked like a lot of fun or all, all three of them looked like Super fun. And I always thought, man, that sucks. But I don't feel that way about Elden Ring because I know that I wouldn't like it. Um, mm. So it, it doesn't bother me that I'm not part of that conversation. Um, 
if anything, the only thing that I I don't like about that that game being you know the the talk of the town at the moment is that algorithms think that I want that because I interact with PS5 content in general on Twitter, mm. Mm. and so I do now get a lot of um, Elden Ring stuff on my feed. And, you know, I don't, it's only, it's a minor inconvenience being like, oh, I don't, that's, that's not content tailored for me, but you've given it to me. Um, so there's that. And then I guess the only, the only thing in terms of the closest thing to FOMO I would get with Elden Ring is that it's obviously going to be part of the game of the year conversation at the end of this year. Mm. And I'm, I'm just not going to play it. And it understandably and i think rightfully will be a lot of people's game of the year or top five when we do our top fives and you know i'll, I'll just think like yeah i can't really contribute to this because i didn't play it but um you know i think everyone should just play kind of what they want to play and uh if you do have fomo maybe at least give it a try you know for example richard major if you think i i, I think it will be too hard and uh, frustrating for me but i've got fear of missing out well, maybe you should just maybe maybe have a go you know, yep. and then then you'll know, really, I think, at that point. Um, Ashton, you too. Give it a go. Yeah. Well, I maybe. gave the beta, the uh, open yeah. beta a go and I just I couldn't get into it. Mm -hmm. I just don't like the way it looks. It's not colorful enough for me. Everything's too gray and brown and my brain turns off and I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I don't, it's the most colorful one. That's what it is, it. isn't it? <laughs> it's got green in it. I know. It's so much green now. I, I just I'd like I love hearing everyone talk about it because I'm like god I just wish I was involved I just wish I could like have something to add to the conversation but I just don't and I just can't like I just can't do it I can't bring myself to play it because I know I'm gonna hate it mm. um same with most Souls games to be fair like when people talk about Souls games I'm always like mm, damn I wish I had wish I could join in but I don't have anything to add because I I'm gonna I'm gonna hate them I yeah, just, I think I, the world building looks really yeah. interesting in all those games. That's the one thing that I do think maybe I, I had yeah. a bit of an understanding about. I wish I was like better at games. Like I wish I was better at like Souls games. I wish I was better at online multiplayer games because then I could like play them, not get my ass kicked and have a good time and be like, well, I really enjoy Overwatch and I really enjoy Apex Legends, but I, I'm bad. I just die immediately every time I try and play. So, but also... I really like the community and the kind of reactions people give to MMORPGs. Like uh, Final Fantasy XIV, people love it. And people talk about it all the time. And they go like, oh, we're going to go do some fishing in Final Fantasy XIV. And I'm like, oh, I wish I was involved fishing. in the fishing. Yeah. But I, they, again, it's one of those things where I just know that it's too much for me to kind of get into. And I'd, I'd feel a bit overwhelmed. So I know that there's like, there's no way that I'm going to, enjoy and playing an mmorpg unless i would guess i was with other people and then i could they could help me through it but i do think that i wish i could kind of like it as much as other people do so that people in my like gaming sphere would be like hey ashton you want to come fishing too come and i'd be like fish. hell yeah hell yeah let's go fishing um i also have like fomo but i guess it's kind of i've fear of having already missed out is kind of i guess the, the way of it's not i'm not currently missing out i just have when people talk about games they played as children mm. or like games that you guys had on the playstation one when you were growing up i'm kind of like oh well i don't have any kind like a lot of this nostalgia that a lot of people have towards video games and stuff and i kind of wish that i did and i kind of have that whole thing of being like because one of the writers was being like, what childhood game did you play that you, you know, you would really like to see remastered? And the only thing I could think of was Nintendogs and um, and Lego Island, which I had on, on the, my dad's computer when That's I was great. like 12. Um, so I, yeah, I wish I kind of had more like childhood experience with games so that I could now be like oh yeah i played that when i was like hey i had a great time and mine's just call of duty when i was like 14 that's that, okay though yeah. that's that's yeah, your story, it's like, my we, story we could, but it's not a good one we could say the same with like snes games yeah. and stuff like I, I don't look at the nes and i wish i, I wish could I'd say play. i liked mario or sonic but i don't i yeah. think i'm just not interested in either of them i have it's like very same. very 
vague memories of um, the kid next door playing Donkey Kong Country on his mm. SNES. And I thought that game, you know, because of the the sprites that are kind of like, they look like they're, they're photos of little claymation model, mm. models. I don't know quite how they did them, but they're like pre-rendered stuff. Um, I thought that look, that game looked technically amazing. And I really wish like that I had that as my nostalgia as mm. well. Um, but yeah, everyone has it, every generation. Yeah. And, uh, or even every, every even if you were around at the time of a certain generation, if you had this console and not that one, then you know there's, mm. you missed out on stuff back then as well. There'll be there'll be someone out there longing for your nostalgia at some Nintendo point. Dogs. Nintendo Dogs. Yeah, like yeah. because they'll they'll have grown up with like Animal Crossing, Assassin's Creed one or something like that would yeah. be their childhood game like, can you imagine anything more bleak than that <laughs> yeah. like that imagine being nostalgic for assassin's creed oh <laughs> awful we sports well we sports. i, love I mean we sports. Sports. i'm not saying it's a bad game but like it's not it doesn't make me feel all warm and but i guess because it's not my my nostalgia maybe yeah, not maybe, maybe mine yeah. yeah. mine's a bit of we sports as well we yeah. party yeah. loved we party mm-hmm. it's great uh, ben, yeah. Do you have anything you fear? You have FOMO for? Oh, I've absolutely I've FOMO'd all over the place various uh. times. Uh, I will very excuse me. What? I FOMO all over the floor. Oh, oh no. sorry. I'll we'll pick it up when up. we're done. Um, I will say very quickly about people who are frightened about playing Elden Ring. Well, not frightened, but you know, terrified, <laughs> <laughs> really scared. Uh, no, you know, it's it's a it's a tough game to get into. So many people have bounced off this series over the years, um, and it's. It's not an easy game. It's not an easy game. It's challenging and you do have to get good and you have to learn how to play. <laughs> but guess what? I was terrible at these games once upon a time. And <gasps> no. I walked away from them for like three years. Like I tried Demon Souls. Excuse me. I'm getting emotional <laughs> thinking about it. I tried Demon Souls. And I did. I was rubbish at it, and it made me really cross. And I didn't play it for three years. Same with, I, and then I bought Dark Souls on launch, tried it, was terrible at it, and then left it for even longer, and then came back. What helped me was having a friend who was super into it and knew how they worked. And then I slowly got the hang of it because I was able to be chaperoned around, basically, as mm. I've spoken about on this podcast before. But also, I've heard stories of a lot of people who didn't like the Dark Souls games, didn't get on with Demon's Souls, but tried Bloodborne and loved Bloodborne. Yeah. Mm. It's 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 going to be, you know, you're going to know whether or not you're into it, but I will say Elden Ring for some reason is only like 45 quid. It's not yeah. a super super duper expensive game. So if you wanted to give it a try, why the hell not? And then you'll know. And then you won't have you'll still have the FOMO of the conversation surrounding it, but you know, you won't have the FOMO. You'll know for sure that you won't like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, games that I've had FOMO for the the Crash and Sane trilogy, mm-hmm. the nostalgia yeah. was real for that, and I didn't like Crash Bandicoot. I I liked Crash Team Racing, but I wasn't into the Crash Bandicoot series when I was uh, when I was young, and so the excitement surrounding it and it was so colourful and people were really like losing their minds and talking about beating certain levels, and I was just sat there thinking. I'd love to be involved in this, mm. but I just I just don't get it. Mm. I don't get it at all. Uh, same for Crash 4 more recently. Yeah. That's another game that I would have loved. Like I did seriously consider buying at one point, and then I started watching a long play to try and tide me over, and I watched it and thought, that looks infuriating. It's, not, it's not a good entry point. It's just, <laughs> it looks it's really infuriating. I, I don't know that I would enjoy that. Um, Psychonauts 2 is a game everyone's been chatting up about yeah. how amazing it is. But I tried Psychonauts 1, and I know it's an older game now. And I didn't like it. Mm. I just couldn't get into it. And that makes me sad because I would love to enjoy Psychonauts 2. James Jenkins, big Psychonauts fan. Loves yeah. it. It's named the named a foster cat after mm. it, uh, one of the characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I couldn't couldn't get into that. And um, another one I've got written down is uh, Borderlands, the pre-sequel, which was one of those games that I was just completely uninterested in until it was like a week before it came out and then all the marketing kicked off and I really panicked like I had a, a real panic like oh my god I really need to play this game it's a Borderlands game I should I should be excited I'm excited now and uh, I, I ended up getting it anyway so it wasn't wasn't so much fo- fo- the, the fear of FOMO as much as anything else fear of almost missing out yes <laughs> that, that made me get it but FOMO FOMO is real you know people it's it can be hard but Elden Ring is is the most accessible one. And it's not going to be for everyone even then. But, you know, try it. 
Try it. I have, I have thought of one more actually. Um, Smash Bros. Mm. I would love. That's a good I, one. I I I or love any fighting game for that matter. Really. Well, yeah. I mean, I I quite like Tekken and Soul Calibur, so I enjoy those. But uh, I I've always liked the idea of like multi franchise crossover stuff where you know there are all these different characters from all these different things, and I know. Yeah, there was like PlayStation All Stars, which wasn't very good, and then like more people are doing the same now. There's the Warner Brothers one, and so on. Um, but when I see people just enjoying Smash Bros and getting excited for new characters and stuff, and then like a new character is revealed, and it's someone I'm like, I have no idea who that is because it's a Nintendo character. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish that I had that Nintendo background that I could mm -hmm. just really hype over, like new character coming. I know we, we've got them all now, but um, yeah, watching all that unfold on Twitter was, I was a little bit jealous of like, you know, I wish that I could feel that excitement. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, uh, let us know down below in uh, if, uh, if, if you've ever had FOMO for anything and everything else that we've covered today. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Have they done it yet? I don't know. Are you doing it now? You typing? Do? Doing it? I don't oh, they've just, they've just done it. They've just oh. done it. I see it. It's down. Oh, yeah. It's there under, it is. It's under the table. Oh, yeah. I there. can see it. Oh, that's obscene, that comment. That's rude, well, isn't it? It is rude. Mm. Have a think How about that. How dare you? Have a think about that. Banned. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is going on today. <laughs> Why do we keep sitting in silence? It's really freaking me out. <laughs> She can't, she can't take the silence. Okay, I feel like I'm, I'm meant it's to deafening. be saying something. No, no. <laughs> if like, anything, I could move on to, to my bit. But yeah, it's Peter's bit next. Yeah, I know. It's but just I, whether, like, I mean, you normally hmm. say Peter's going to tell you. Uh, That's true. But, but I do also norm normally say, let us know what, what you think of what was. So I just <laughs> oh, thought, I I thought so maybe you were just going to. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not, to be clear, I'm not cross. Okay. I'm just disappointed. Right. No, I thought maybe you'd roll right, right into it. But I'm quite happy with it. I'm enjoying the silence. Okay. So. Well, let's just have a bit more. Look how uncomfortable she is. I really Silence. Don't like it. And then I'm going to tell you where you can find us on the internet. Uh, yes. We are Thanks Team Triple Peter. Jump everywhere worth being. Uh, YouTube.com and twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump. It's where our videos and live streams go. When we're streaming on both of those channels, we're modded by Lobrotovic, Trailing Badger, and Mr. Black. Thank you very much. By the way, talking of twi uh, Twitch, if you've got Amazon Prime, uh, part of the whole bundle there is a Twitch sub, so you can spend that on us. Won't cost you anything extra, um, and we'll benefit from it. Twitter and Facebook.com forward slash Team Triple Jump uh, for video uh, and, and live stream announcements, legacy content, uh, live stream stuff, uh, occasional Facebook lives, and so on and so forth. All kinds of stuff happening there. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Fraser, for looking after our social media. We also now have a TikTok. <gasps> TikTok.com forward slash at Team Triple Jump. Is that at symbol accurate? Yeah, Ashton? I think so. That's why okay. I just copied and pasted it off the website. So. Okay. Oh, yeah, but you can, if you've got TikTok, you can just type in at Team Triple Jump. We are ticking yeah. and or talking over there, mm -hmm. um, especially Ashton and Fraser. Mainly um, just me and Fraser mainly, right now. Mainly at the moment. I think we're planning on roping in Peter, but Ben is the hard no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 I'm busy. And finally, patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. You can go there and check out all of our different Patreon tiers. There are many, many different rewards that you can have a look at and uh, pay for if you want. <laughs> we have a website. It's triple j.mup. That's triple ju dot mp. Spots jump. If you want to join our Discord, you can go to triple j.mup forward slash Discord. Chat with all our wonderful community. On Discord, we're modded by Jack, Joe, Tori, and Hollow Eyes. And if they tell you to do something, do it um if you want to listen to the podcast in its audio forms maybe you've got a long drive ahead of you you're off to or maybe you want a plane to ireland um why not go to triple j.mup forward slash podcast to find out where you can listen to it in its audio forms if you want to listen if you want to watch any of the live stream vods that you've missed over the uh, couple of weeks go to triple j.mup forward slash vods that's v-o-d-s and if you want to buy some sick and cool merch that we're all sporting today am i wearing sports time jacket Merch. I don't. You this can is. Buy that on our this, legacy you can store. buy this yeah. on our YouTube. legacy store. Um, you can go to triplejumpshop.com to buy some cool merch and uh, tweet us slash look uh, follow the Twitter at triplejumpshop to find out when all the new merch releases are coming out. If you want to. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My turn. Yeah. yeah.
Why not follow Peter and Ashton on Instagram and Twitter at that Peter Austin and at Scrambled Ashton and myself just on Twitter at Confused underscore Dude. We do lists every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Streams every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday being the joint streams on YouTube and the other streams being solo streams on Twim. Worst games ever is fortnightly Friday for patrons of a certain tier Sunday for everybody else. We do the podcast every Saturday and we've got shows all the bloody time. Where have you been? Pay attention. Come on. <laughs> go to the channel. No, 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 no. Uh, why not leave a five-star review on iTunes or your platform of choice? It helps something to do with that. What's my jumper doing? Al Gore's Rhythms. Al Gore's, Gore's rhythms. rhythms. Look at that. Mine's That's doing fun. that too. That's fun, isn't it? Can yours do that, Peter? It can do. Yeah. Um, That's good, isn't it? These, this comes built in when you buy this, by the way, from the, from the shop. You just you don't have to pay extra for this. This this is free. You can put a bottle of LucasAid Sport in there for yeah. your sports times. You can store anything. Oh, there's a fluff. Oh. A Joey. A Joey, yeah, yeah. You can snowy Joey. Yeah. All of them. Uh, well, Facebook.com forward slash jump. Please go follow. We're nearly please there now. Please, 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 please. Uh, TikTok. That's still happening. And it's good. You should go check we're it out. Almost, we, we're trying to get to 1,000 at this point. Hopefully get there soon. We're almost there. Hey, look for that. Got exactly. a ranked list coming on the weekend. Is it? Is this yeah, confirmed? Seems to be. Ooh, uh, Alex boy. reckons at time of recording he's going to finish it today. Therefore, uh, he may have to do a couple of tweakums tomorrow, but it should be done in time for the weekend. end um, unless he gets mown down by a bus on his way home <laughs> tonight. Um, Touch wood. Hopefully he does. Yeah, that would be great. Oh. Uh, no, we love Alex. He's done an excellent <laughs> job. Uh, on With... Did you say what the ranked was? No. No? Are we going to say? Oh, it's a good one. We should. We should say. Somebody once told me the world is going to be Shrek ranked. Rolling. We're doing every We're Shrek. Doing Shrek, Shrek game ranked worst to best. It's a Shrek list. Uh, we're doing every Shrek video game ranked from worst to best. Philip nearly went insane writing yeah. it. But it's uh, his fault. He, he's the gun that put his, the idea into the it atmosphere. It is his fault. Yeah. So, yeah. He manifested it. That's sure true. did. So hopefully that'll be coming. If not, it's already out. Um, Peter. Yeah. It is a worst games ever week. It is. However, our precious editor, James Jenkins, who we have not paid enough and yes. has some, he's got sort of like a tiny Tim disease because, <laughs> yes, he's, because yeah. he lives in sort of like has a he cold. Got scurvy. Scurvy. Or he's got, <laughs> yeah. Dropsy, scurvy, all the hits, all the classics. Cholera. He lives lives in a little coal cellar. So mm. that's the problem. Now, James is unwell, isn't he? Yeah. Games. So obviously I was off all week. We, normally we would have had worst games ever recorded for the start of this week for James to start editing. So I was off all last week. So we didn't have it recorded. Then Ben was off on Monday for his self-care day. So then on Tuesday, we finally recorded worst games. And we're like, you get, is that enough time, James, for you to do it? He's like, yeah, yes, Mr. Scrooge, I think, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Uh, and now James Jenkins He's is sick. a sick man. Um, and so I suspect he's doing big plops. Worst games ever will not. Well, be, we don't know that. We don't know that. For will sure. not, not be available this weekend. However, if you are a patron, weirdest games ever was this weekend. Yes. Oh. So if you want some kind of dose of games ever, um, then being a patron, you get one week uh, early access to what will be next week's YouTube mm -hmm. episode of Weirdest Games Ever. So yep. mm -hmm. you can have that at least, maybe. We will do uh, a, a relevant post, obviously, if... I mean, he, he could show up tomorrow and edit like the Dickens and get the whole like thing... Like Charles Dickens. Like the Charles Dickens character he is and get the whole thing finished. But at the moment, at the time of recording this podcast, it's looking pretty unlikely. So we will let you know, of course. And uh, if, he, if we can't get one out this week, we will just double up so there'll be one next week and the week after yeah as well. you'll still get it'll just be this one gets delayed by one week and then we yep. go back to the usual exactly yeah that'll be it so you'll be getting no fewer episodes no no lesser i think mm, indeed. wonderful peter have you got the um in fact i shouldn't really say anything should i, I should just be quiet and then there should be a silence and then maybe, yeah. maybe you do it maybe you don't <laughs> horizon for belden ring Cool. Thanks, everyone. That's great. We'll, we'll see you next week. See you next week, everyone. Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.